This lumberjack boom town was the birthplace of Minnesota. right here on the corner of Myrtle and Maine in Stillwater, Minnesota began. In the 1800s, this place was full of lumberjacks and lumber barons, because at the height of the log boom, Stillwater's lumber mills were the largest in the country, which made Minnesota one of the most important lumber markets in all of the world. There's still a buzz in Stillwater, but not because of lumber mills. Along with the 20,000 residents, tourists add to the excitement and to the uh, buzz of Stillwater. Stillwater sits on the uh, west bank of the St. Croix River. St. Croix River is what separates Wisconsin from Minnesota, and it's not too far from the Twin Cities. In fact, it's 15 miles from um, St. Paul, and it's 25 miles from Minneapolis. As far as Main Streets, Stillwater is on the National Historic Register and is home to over 100 shops and restaurants. I love a good Main Street. Are you surprised? Take a look at that bridge. How great is that? I wish I knew more about this bridge, but um, guess what? There's somebody here who does. Kevin, come here. So you know about this bridge? Yes, I do. Why are there only two of these left? Do we know? Uh, I really can't get parts for them anymore, really. Oh, really? It was built in 1931. Good. This used to be carry all vehicle traffic. Four or five years ago, they put that new bridge in and they closed this bridge and they did a refurbish. So now we're part of a loop trail. Loop trail. 4.7 miles. Yeah, it connects bike. Minnesota, Wisconsin over two bridges, right? Correct. Yeah. It's used a lot from bikers, inline skaters, walkers, you name it. This operates how? See those big boxes on the, on the side right there? Yeah. Those are, that's concrete. Those are 250,000 pounds a piece. <laughs> then they're counterweights. So okay. when the bridge goes up, those counterweights come down. Yeah. And then when the bridge goes down, they go back up, and that's what operates the bridge. There's a person inside that shack right there. Man, this is the guy? Yeah. <laughs> so this is like 1931 meets 2021. This is the original uh, control panel of the shack. We just flip these switches right here. Mm -hmm. And that turns on the, the bells ringing and the lights flashing. Yeah. And that gets people to know that it's going to race. Uh -huh. So they start running. <laughs> Come on, you're going. <laughs> Here we go. Let's see where that white line is. Yeah. So people stand behind that. Careful. There it goes. <laughs> Kevin's doing this. Yeah. And this whole span raises up with the with the shack. Every half hour we, we send it up if, if there's boats and we pretty much run it from eight in the morning till midnight. This is where my job has its really ups, ups and downs. <laughs> Did you get that? Yeah. Corny. Kevin. Wow. wow is right, kid. I bet you're wondering how Stillwater got its name. It was named by the guy who opened the first sawmill in Stillwater. It wasn't called Stillwater then because John McCusick, he called it Stillwater. And you wonder why? Well, I believe it's because of the uh, still waters of the St. Croix River, or it could be that he missed his hometown, which was called Stillwater, Maine. I tend to believe it's because of the still waters of the St. Croix River. We're gonna talk about a boat. <clears throat> nope, not that boat. Take a look at this boat. Let's talk to John. How are it's you? Nice to you. Good to see you. I'm John, no. Thank you. Welcome to Gondola Romantica. <laughs> Ciao. Bella. <laughs> Ciao. <laughs> this is your boat. It is my boat. Yeah, it's and you're a gondolier. I am. Yeah. Slow mm -hmm. and easy, no fast moves. There okay. you go. Um, there's only about 30 of these boats in the country, and I'm the only one in the Midwest. You know, pretty much East Coast, West Coast, or Stillwater, or Venice. How many people can you fit on your uh, gondola? You can get up to six people. Up to six people? Yep. This boat was built in 1985. 1985? Yes. And where, where was it before it landed on this water? Uh, in Venice. It was it? in Venice? Yes. If you get a chance to go to Venice, go. There's no place like it. Yeah. In the meantime, this is the next best thing, and it's a lot cheaper. <laughs> so are you like the traditional gondolier as well that you sing? I remind people that I'm a gondolier that learned how to sing, not a singer that learned how to row. Oh, sola mio, stans fronte a te. 
So let's talk history of these. Uh, the first reference to a gondola is in some of the writings in the 1400s and paintings in the late 1400s. Okay. Gondoliers were elevated from a lower working class to an upper working class huh. because everything happened on the gondola and the gondoliers knew all the family secrets. Oh, I'd be a terrible gondolier. <laughs> <laughs> I would tell it all. <laughs> There are five sets of steps that will take you from Main Street to the top of the bluff. This is on the south side of Main Street, so this is the south side Main Street steps. If you do this six times up, six times down, that would be a mile of exercise. I just did nine steps. I'm done. We're in Stillwater, so what we need to talk about is weddings. I mean, we're literally doing people's best day of their life. Of course. Over and over, over and over. over. It never Somebody gets old. Else's best day. I love the fact that you're brother and sister. Have you always worked together? Have you always been in this sort of business? No, I, I was a math teacher, and then I started shooting weddings. So I've been okay. a photographer for 20 years. So I was a dean of students at a college, and in 2017, Jed said, hey, I think you should work with me and plan weddings and events and galas and corporate things. and. It's been amazing. Nepotism works. I have, I, <laughs> it's good. To, that's a good message. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they come here for cocktail hour. Dinner's there, and then the photo booth here. We have like a. It's an Ames room design, which is a <laughs> optical illusion, so you can look big and small. It's like from the 50s. Is that where the bride? Yep. There's like, bride's room. This is called the um, Oxford Suite. Oh wow! Isn't this great to have? And then the groom's room is the bourbon room. That's downstairs. We got to keep them on a different level. So we have a salon downstairs, which was one of our first tenants. We have a speakeasy, the Velveteen, downstairs. We have my photography studio, which is Studio J and Judd Sater Photography. Stillwater Escape Company, which is the rock star room, which we're going to be excited to hear you sing a little something. Where it began. La, 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 la. People can really come here for a wedding and have an entire experience throughout the whole weekend. As a guest, this is so perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Evidence of Stillwater's importance in the early days of this state lie in the fact that there were three Minnesota communities chosen to be the location for some very important public institutions. St. Paul, of course, was the capital of the state. Minneapolis had the University of Minnesota and Stillwater. What important public institution was in Stillwater? Remember when the American dream was being able to say, I made that, I built that. Wouldn't it be great if your kids and grandkids chose a career that provides that kind of pride with good pay, but without a ton of student loan debt? A four-year degree isn't the only path to success. We need talented people to make and build. Tell the young people you love that skilled work isn't a thing of the past. It's a bright future. Being diagnosed with breast cancer changes everything and it happens every single day. Very quickly, patients and caregivers realize this is not just a medical journey. They've been dragged onto an emotional roller coaster. ABCD trains breast cancer survivors who have ridden that same ride and provide encouragement and understanding like no one else can. From diagnosis through treatment and beyond, all services are free and virtual. Wisconsin's picture-perfect historic downtown Greendale isn't just a great backdrop for photos. It's the perfect place to make new friends, take a leisurely stroll, shop for treasure, and eat some really great food. Ask anyone who's made memories here, we'll all tell you the same thing. You just gotta see Greendale. The important public institution that ended up in Stillwater? The prison. Yeah. I am standing in front of what was the warden's house. The prison was to my left, it's no longer there. So this was right outside the prison. I believe this was part of the prison. I think this was the, um, the ticket window. <laughs> How many tickets today? I'm not sure I really want to go see that movie. How are you, sir? Very Dick good. Zimmerman, yes. you and your wife own the trolleys? Yes. Yeah, and have you always been a, a, a trolley driving historian? Did you? Did no. You, no. Once I retired, this came available and I just started doing it. Yeah. 
It's a good something to do, isn't it? Excellent. Yeah, and what a beautiful town to do it in. Yeah, yes. it's, 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 it's a beautiful city you have here. This is Polly the Trolley. We have Dolly, Molly, Holly, <laughs> Ollie, Jolly, and Polly. And Polly. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I love this. If you enjoyed your trip, tips are appreciated. I am all <laughs> set. <laughs> all right. Okay. <laughs> We're on the trolley, which is a good, uh, uh, what a great place to talk about history of this community. It's a great way to see the sites within a certain time limit and really get the feel for the history of the St. Croix Valley and for Stillwater. It was all about lumber, all about logs. Originally, that's what it was. Yeah, and that lasted how long? 75 years. After uh, the St. Croix boom closed in 1914, Stillwater went bust, but there were a few companies, a few manufacturers that stayed into town mm. that were able to support the community and then build on them. Well, good job, you Hopefully guys. you got a taste of still water. Yep. So there are places we go into that I am so excited to go because I have no idea what they make. This place I am so excited to get into because I know exactly what they make. Take a look. It speaks to the fabric of this community. Uh, this is woven in pretty tight, isn't it? Uh, Hans Anderson, uh, in 1903, actually settled right here in just south of Stillwater with his sons. The logging business was, was really busy. Sure. Logs would float down the river. Yeah. He'd take those logs, started a lumber company, and actually started to put that wood into making windows and doors. He thought, why don't I put all of the frame components together in a package that could be delivered to the home so that they could put the window together within 10 minutes right on the home site. And sure enough, 117 years later, we're making uh, America's most trusted and loved windows and doors. We're on a campus where the plant is how big? Well, this is one of the largest manufacturing sites in the Midwest. We have over 40 acres, <laughs> over 3 million square feet under roof here. The casement window yeah. is the one that you crank out. Crank oh, okay. Out. Double hung, you lift up and down. Just about everyone that comes off might be a different size, color, shape, have different hardware on it. So the you know, variety. is watching this going, I bet those are my windows. They you could know be. that's happening. They could be. And as many women as men working here? Yeah, we've got a pretty good mix. Diversity is a really important part. Of both gender diversity and racial diversity, we're really working to try to drive a really very diverse workforce. Yeah. Are you hiring? Because I'm looking for something part-time. What are you thinking? <laughs> oh, we could, we could use you. Could you? Yeah, we're, we're growing. We're growing fast. So what's in your house? Anderson. Nothing Anderson but Anderson. Anderson. It has to be. It has right. to be. Are you surprised I love a good barber shop? Mm -hmm. So you came here a year and a bit ago because? You know, they lift up their small businesses and they all look out for each other and I want to be a part of that. Do you need to do his makeup or anything first like you guys did for me? Dude, look, I don't need makeup. Uh, how long have you been coming here? Uh, probably two years. Two I years? I to his old place in Minneapolis. Oh, you yeah. did? Yeah. Did his hair look like this when you started two years ago? Chris? No, he looked like he came out of the 70s, so I had to do a lot of work. <laughs> Why the name? Prohibition Barbers? Mm -hmm. It's kind of a crazy story. I started giving haircuts in Iraq. We didn't have a way to get our hair cut, so kind of picked up some tools. And uh, we had a secret room in the basement of Saddam's old, one of his palaces. No. Yep, and I started to give haircuts every night, and that was my thing, and it was kind of a thing to give back to my, my brothers that I served with. It's nice. Like, that story is <laughs> remarkable. It was pretty incredible, but I tell you what, it's, it's helped me build a new client base with new veterans, you know, that I didn't serve with, and that's something that's really special. I spent 23 years in the Navy. Oh, you did? You know, when I created Prohibition, I wanted it to be kind of a little bit of an escape, not your typical barbershop where you line up, right. and you wait for a haircut, and then you're out the door. This kind of shop is one where I really built it on relationship building and building a sense of community within the shop and with the clients, and it's worked. A nice classic cut. <laughs> and we'll try our best. You're open when to when? 10 to 6 most days. 10 to 6? Yes, sir. And you're you're not here on Mondays? Sundays and Mondays are our, that's our weekend. Take two days off? I do. Wow. I'm a highfalutin CEO. <laughs> there we classic go. Cut. Looking good, huh? You look great. Now he's going right. to pour a little dram of whiskey and relax. All right. And chat. Bertha is so great. Look at her. She's like, the camera better have a treat. <laughs> 
When you hear the word armory, don't you think of an old building? Not here in Stillwater. This one was built in 2017. It's the Minnesota Army National Guard Stillwater Readiness Center. It's a home to five units, including the 34th Military Police Company. Take a walk through the lobby. It's full of incredible historical photos, some over a century old. There is an appliance in nearly every kitchen in America that was invented right here in Stillwater. Any guesses? Think breakfast. This is the uh, Stillwater Vertical Lift Bridge. And the cool thing is, is they're doing this just for you. <laughs> this is one place, John McGivern, that we couldn't get you. No, they wouldn't let me in there. let you be on the bridge. I'm in the Lumberjack, which is an ax throwing bar in Stillwater, Minnesota. And you've got to see, um, it was probably about my sixth or seventh shot, but take a look what I got. Swear to, that's mine. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Lois, you saw it happen. How dare it's you? It's true. I just think people will be surprised. <gasps> oh! Did you see? I'm telling you. Okay. John McGivern. Lumberjack. Who knew? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh! It's so well, close. Yes, thank you, Jason. <laughs> Next time on John McGivern's Main Streets, Jesus doing this. Touchdown, Jesus. The East Race is the world's first man made inner urban whitewater lake. This is <laughs> Stu D. Baker. This is Swoop. And they're friends. They are friends. John, that looks really good. Ta da! How are those chocolates? The best. Woo! Yeah. All right. So back in 1919, there was a guy named Charlie Stripe. Love a visual aid. And he was frustrated because his company was serving burnt toast out of the cafeteria. So he tickered around and he invented the first pop-up toaster. Yeah. He sold the patent to a company in Minneapolis, which became known as Toastmaster. And in 1926, Toastmaster marketed the first household pop-up toaster. Okay, I want to take the moment to uh, thank Charlie Stripe because there's nothing like perfect toast. We're on the rooftop at the top of the St. Croix River by the lift bridge. It's yeah. a beautiful spot, isn't it? Yeah. As I said to my producer, I was yeah. like, he's a kid. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the general manager, but you are the general manager. Yes, I'm the general yeah. manager here. Is it a great job? Oh, I love it. Do you? I am just a hospitality guy. I'm. I love kind of taking care of people, yeah. making memories. That's really what it comes down to. This is kind of the original 1890 section of the building yeah. where all the lumberjacks would kind of house their operation. It has big bank vaults and different things where they stored all their gold from all the money that they made chopping down these trees and sending them down the river. But now we keep the, the real valuable stuff in oh, here. you do? The alcohol. <laughs> this is where we keep all of our wine tucked right oh, on there. Oh, there we go. So this used to be the hotel lobby here um, just a few oh, years of ago. Was. What's the menu like? Uh, so this is an Irish-American style food. Okay, so which means? We got the whiskey, we got the good burgers, we got some cheese curds, we got yeah. it all. This is a restaurant as well? Correct, this is a restaurant and bar space, so it's an Italian-style restaurant. Okay, Chef Alex, nice to meet you. How are you, sir? What did you bring out? Uh, right here we got our goat cheese dip. This is our Papa's house salad. This is our margarita pizza. It looks great. Are there some ghosts in this building? I did not believe in ghosts until I worked at this building. And now you do. Absolutely. I was right over at the bar space there, the only person here in the middle of winter. And all of a sudden, on this wall right over here, every single thing fell off the wall. Every picture frame, the curtain, and I heard somebody yell, get out. I tell you, I ran to my office quicker. Got out. <laughs> I got out. 
So if you're wondering what's going on food-wise in Stillwater, you're gonna be so excited. Did you know back in 2020, USA Today named Stillwater one of the 10 best small town food scenes in the country. So if you leave Stillwater hungry, eh, it's your problem. How did this happen? How did this concept happen? And how did you get all of these artists in here? So I am an interior designer, yeah. and I work with a lot of artisans in my designs. That's why I opened the store, so we could showcase all the artisans that we have. We only allow two artisans per medium. And how many are here total, did you Almost say? Almost 100. Almost 100. How long have you been in this shop? Uh, since they opened. That was since one of the first oh, really? months, yeah. 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 So what I'm working on now is just the underpainting for this. OK. I feel like I'm probably ready to put color on it. Yeah. It's amazing when you approach someone and say, can, if you got any questions or anything, say, yeah, tell me about the artisan. As soon as they connect with that artisan, Boom. they're picking it up and going yeah. out the door. So basically, this is already sanded up and ready to go. Yeah. So I'm going to turn this on and just going to rub the excess off. That's the finished product. Good job. Thank Thanks you. for your help. It's great, isn't yeah. it? Oh, yeah. This entire place is an inspiration. No. <laughs> what are we doing? We are spinning naturally shed buffalo fiber. Oh, it couldn't be softer, could it? Right. Are there others working with this? <laughs> there aren't. <laughs> no, these are gorgeous. Well, thank you. Yeah. And they also offer workshops and classes. We do special yeah. events. Perfect. I hand paint and hand letter stationery. Oh, my Lord. I want people to write to each other. I want yeah. people to share your words, your thoughts on paper. And this, this was all done with your hands? It's all done with my hands, yes. I can just sit and weave and relax. Yeah. And Where'd you learn this? I kind of made it up. I found an old uh, magnifying glass that I had from when I was a kid. And then I thought, well, I wonder if if I could ever do some artwork. You got the perfect look for it. To stop by and say, what are you doing? What are you doing there? <laughs> no, yeah. Really? When you look at it like blacksmith, any of these artisans can be called smiths. Absolutely. It's a great they, name. Yeah. Oh, well, good. I'm glad uh, you like it. Now that's how I'm going to refer to anybody who I know <laughs> like does this stuff. You're a smith. You're a smith. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Cameraman Jason, what do you think they call Stillwater? Kelly? Perfect. So they call it the San Francisco of the Midwest, or at least of Minnesota. That's what I call it. Take a look at this. Come on, it's like Knob Hill in San Francisco. Every community owes a debt of gratitude to its veterans. We join the people of Stillwater honoring and remembering all of those who served. Have you ever been to that place? That place where there's always something new to see, where there's always something new to learn. That place with so much beauty that it fills you up with joy. That place that speaks to your mind and your heart, where inspiration feeds your soul and where the wonder of the natural world is always growing. Ryman Gardens at Iowa State University. This is that place. Hey, Mayor. How are you? Good to see you, Mayor Ted. Good to see you. Welcome Can I have to Stillwater. Seat? Have a seat. You know there's more. Boatloads more at MainStreets.tv because our producer always wants to fit in just one more thing. Thanks, Mayor. Good hey, news. Nice, nice to meet you. Appreciate it. So this bar is called the Lumberjack, the axe-throwing bar. This yeah. is your bar? That is correct. The axe throwing bar? Yes. How did this happen? Were there hurdles that had to, I mean, you can't just be oh, like, Lord. I have an axe. <laughs> Guess my, what? Yeah, my insurance agent was like, um, what now? <laughs> so how does that all work? As far as? <laughs> the bar and the axe throwing. And we're like, hand in hand. Of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm scared. I'm scared, and only because I'm competitive. Oh, Just so well, you that's know. fair. So, oh, well, here I, I go. I think you'll do good. So these tree stumps that you mm -hmm. call, what do you call them? Cookies. Because that's what lumberjacks call them when they take down a tree. That's what yeah. they're called. Yeah. And do you, do you have a place where you keep your cookies here? I love talking about this. <laughs> On a sheet tray out back. Um, <laughs> Can you tell I'm not sporty? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Is that just water? Yep. It makes the um, logs softer. Oh, yeah. We use a, like a little more dull axe so nobody gets hurt. So officially, it's a hatchet. Because okay. an axe has two bits. 
two sharp bits and a hatchet has just one. So we're, to, we're hatchet throwing. Yeah, we're hatchet throwing. Okay. Don't tell. Okay. Because it's not as fun to Nobody say. Nobody will know. Nobody will know. It looks like a lot of people hit that bullseye though. Oh, yeah, it's it? a pretty popular area. <laughs> Is there a little training involved? You do have an axe coach the whole time that you're here. Oh, it wanted to. It wasn't straight, was it? Everything has to be straight. It's kind of like fly fishing. Like. Again. <laughs> All right, throwing a baseball, chopping wood. Again! Like yeah. this? Yep. Are you, you are, what? Really far away? And you're like a place kicker. You know how they step into the kick? No! <laughs> <laughs> Yes! Woo! Is that a zero? <laughs> we'll give you a one for, a one. for style. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, talk about the name, because it's the perfect name for this community. The lift bridge itself is such an iconic image of Stillwater that really we wanted to pick that as, and it's a great metaphor, it's a, a bridge to greater things, to craft beer, to, you know, the, it's just a very positive image, so that's why we picked it. How did you make your way here? Well, I grew up in the brewing industry in, in Milwaukee, so a great beer town, Yeah. and uh, when I moved to Stillwater, there wasn't a lot of uh, breweries here. The craft beer scene was just starting in the Twin Cities and in Wisconsin. So some friends and I thought it would be a great idea if we could start a brewery right here in the town that we came to love. Yeah. I thought you said you were closed. Are you closed right now? We're closed I mean, until noon. Who the, who, what, what's going on behind you? Who's that? <laughs> oh, the, the whole family is here from Greendale, Wisconsin. <laughs> well, They're on their fifth beer of the day, so. <laughs> you know. Good to see you, nice Wisconsin you. people. Yeah. You're all from Greendale? Yes. How great is that? And whose kid is this? Mine. Well, this is your kid. Is your kid making good beer? He's making very good beer. Look at that. You're see? Yes. Delicious. <laughs> what's this for? We do flights here, so you can actually Smart. have small five ounce beers, and you can have any of our 16 options of beers that are on tap. I'll try the Juicy. And I'm gonna have the rip here. It's my way, right, right. here. Cheers. Good cool. job, thank you. This main street in Stillwater speaks to me. And still water. What in Portland? Oh, that was easy, huh? Oh, easy. Yeah, <laughs> you're a, you're a natural. <laughs> okay. Come on, I'll out. sign a waiver. Oh. Come on, M. Dot. Let's do that again. I was burping all over. That was, that was perfect. You're never gonna get better than that. Nope. Perfect. <laughs> all right, guys, get out. I'm kidding. I'm kidding.